In this presentation of the session on participatory research, I would like to share with you my experience on participatory communication. And participatory communication has been written about by IDRC Canada, among others, and I include a few links to different resources on the subject below this video. So the purpose of my presentation today is to convince you that it's worth properly planning and budgeting for participatory communication in your project, both as a way of reaching out to external audiences and as a way of reaching back to the communities with whom you have worked. Participatory communication or communication in general is often regarded as secondary in a research project, but there are at least three reasons for which it is important. First, it is key to achieving impact, relevance and outreach. Second, it can make your research even more meaningful by including the communi communities in your communication activities, from which they can further build their capacities and engage in your work. And third, you can get also some first-hand qualitative evaluation of the project through the interviews. Participatory communication can take many forms. Mass media, such as newspaper, traditional media, like songs and storytelling, um, community media, like rural radio, or group media, like video. A video, especially when done towards the end of the project, can be an effective way of engaging in the topic without giving too much information. By participatory production, I do not mean giving people cameras to make the film themselves, which is also a known method, but rather including their voices and their stories, rather than follow an earlier developed script as either a voiceover or memorized interviews. As example, I will use a video I produced in Zambia called Cooking Together in Zambia. And to give you a little bit of context, it was part of our nutrition initiative and done in the framework of agricultural, aquatic agricultural systems program and uh, agriculture for nutrition and health program. And it aimed at diversifying diets and improving livelihoods through use of locally available seasonal foods. As an unplanned outcome of the project, Local communities organize themselves into cooking groups to share recipes and knowledge about food production and preparation. We want to capture on the film the backstage of this process and what it changed in people's lives through direct testimonials. Apart from the documentary approach, participatory production means listening to advice on what should be featured in terms of location, people and activities. It's a learning process for both parties, the production crew and the people on the ground. It's a continuous process of checking what visuals may work well and what are the activities that can be shot to complete the story told through the interviews. So, for example, we wanted to feature the journey of food from the field to the plate and until we went to the field we did not realize that it also entails uh, watering the fields manually every morning. So we decided we would actually film this and here is how it looks like. I was growing up like we just depended on maize in our place. Nothing mostly was done to think about the diet because we believed that what we were cooking and what we were eating was enough for us. We used it to overcook the food. So we didn't even know how to feed our babies. As a result, they were not getting other vitamins from other crops. We started planning this film about three months in advance. We had a lot of correspondence with local people working with the communities in the field to identify farmers who are champions in growing a and using a diversity of crops. 
And while we wanted to show all that variety in the film, our trip was planned for June, which is a dry season and very few crops grow actually in, in that month. Additional challenges were posed by the high waters in parts of the Barotse floodplain, which would not allow us to get to many villages by other means but boat. Thinking about these things in advance helped us plan around it. And by planning the production with people on the ground much in advance, we went to the right shooting location and talked to people who were actually growing and eating a variety of crops and who were enthusiastic and willing to talk about the project. For the rest, we relied on what people would tell us, what were the most important lessons and reflections for them. It is helping us. Even our babies have changed. The health of our babies have changed. Even the health of our husbands have changed. My dream for the future is that this program should expand. So to go back to the three reasons I mentioned at the beginning for making participatory communication, with the example of the film we made in Barotse, I can confirm that we managed to obtain great outreach. Apart from numerous blogs and social media, the film was also accepted in, the, in an international film festival in Paris, and I include a link to it under this video. As for the second part, on making the research more meaningful, we could definitely notice people's interest and appreciation in the participatory video production, and they confirmed they learned a lot on how to express themselves. On top of that, only very small parts of the filmed footage were used for the films, but the rest was not wasted. We transcribed all the interviews with all people we interviewed as part of the production, and these contain invaluable feedback, reflection and thoughts for future research. In conclusion, communications completes research and doing it in a participatory way further builds capacity and creates an additional loop to feed the evaluation back to the project team. It can be used to reach out to external audiences and through participatory production to reach back to the communities. So I would encourage you all to consider it when planning for your next project. Thank you.